Hi, right, Cooper Glover, 1972, back with another video, part 55. Uh, criterions again, Criterions uh, number four, the Criterions that... Uh, I did all the Criterions in the bookcase, so now we're on the Criterions from the Towers. And uh, once we finish these Criterions, this, this will be all the Criterions that will be covered. Um, I, I've noticed that I talk about... I'll read, um, I'll, I'll take a criterion and I'll read the back of it and read the special features and, and, and I'll offer my commentary, my commentary or my thoughts or what I think about said movie. And, uh, I guess it could be boring to some people. Um, and I'm, I apologize in advance. <clears throat> um, if you want to, if you if you like watching my entire DVD and Blu-ray Blu collection, but you you find the Criterion part very um, dull or what what have you, um, you can switch to other parts of the collection, um, or you could fast forward through the video and just get to see the, after I read the selection, read the um, summary of the movie and the special features. Um, you can you can find out what I have to say about it. Um, I, 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 I say it, I, I talk about it because I, I read the back because like this film, If, I've never seen it before, but I bought it because it was Malcolm McDowell and uh, Malcolm McDowell was in one of my favorite movies of all time, Clockwork Orange, <coughs> by my favorite director, Stanley Kubrick. And, um, but I know nothing about If, so I, I when I, this is the first one I'm going to start with, and um, I'm going to, I have to read it off the back because, in other, other, other words, I don't really know exactly what to say about it. Um, but in, in any, any event, uh, there's not a lot of criterions left. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a little bit, but, but, but after this, um, when I show my DV, other DVDs and Blu-rays that... The rest of it not being Criterion, um, that I will approach it in a different manner. Um, probably won't even read the back. I don't, I don't think I will. And um, and and if I if I if I um, show a, a movie that's not a Criterion and I haven't seen it because I buy a lot of blind buys, um, not just Criterion but other other uh, publishing companies, other movies as well. Um, then I'll just offer my insight as to like why I wanted to buy it or why it looked interesting or what, what have you. So anyways, um, so, so if you, if you don't want to watch this, if you, if you don't want to watch me talking about reading the back off of, off a DVD cover, I know it kind of sounds dull, but the reason I do it is because, um, it, it might, there might be something of interest on in the back that I didn't know about. And then I look at the special features and somebody, maybe some kind of director or special effects person is talking about why the film's so important. And um, when, I, when I see their name, I, I, can, I can call from that, like what they've, what those people have done that is not in relation to the actual movie itself, but into relation of how, uh, their job what they've done in other movies and how and why they're commenting because you know if it's if it's a dvd on uh, like thief of baghdad like uh, ray harry hawson or or uh, francis ford coppola or, or martin scorsese like why why it had an influence on them you know but i wouldn't i wouldn't really even know that unless i read the back so that's why i read the back so anyways let's i i, I know i've chattered but i just wanted to to say why I do it, and, and after the criterions will be a different story. So, anyways, uh, first criterion we have is If with Malcolm McDowell. Lindsay Anderson's If is a daringly anarchic vision of British society set in a boarding school in late 60s England. Before Kubrick made his mischief iconic in a clockwork orange, Malcolm McDowell made a hell of an impression as the insouciant. Mick Travis, who along with his school chums, trumps authority at every turn, finally emerging as a violent savior in the vicious games 
of one-upmanship played by both students and masters. Mixing color and black and white as audaciously as it combines fantasy and reality, if remains one of cinema's most unforgettable rebel yells. So, um, and then uh, the, the transfers proved by cinematographer Miroslav um, Andrefik and assistant editor Ian Rakoff with un uncompressed monaural soundtrack, audio commentary featuring film critic and historian David Robinson and actor Malcolm McDowell. Um, there is a Blu-ray release of Clockwork Orange. It's not part of the Kubrick collection. Well, I don't know. Maybe in for future Kubrick box sets, they've had they've had Malcolm McDowell do the commentary. I think they have. Maybe, maybe, maybe a newer box set of Kubrick box, of uh, Kubrick films has has uh, um, Malcolm McDowell in the commentary because I. I have the Kubrick box set, but it's a very it's a, it's the maybe it's the first ever DVD box set of it. It had no commentaries on it, and then um, I bought uh, since that time I bought four, four Kubrick uh, D. Uh, well, actually, well, two of them are DVDs and two of them are Blu-rays, and. Um, um, one of them features a commentary, which is Clark or Gorge. The other Blu-ray is, and that's a Blu-ray, the Clark or Gorge. And, and the other Blu-ray is a Criterion, a Dr. Strangelove. It doesn't have a commentary, but... And the other two are, are Criterions, um, but they're DVDs. And Clark or Gorge, that version that I have that's down the box, that, that's not a Criterion. Uh, they... Uh, Maybe at some point double uh, Clockwork Orange on Criterion. I, I I probably wouldn't be surprised if they do so, um, but haven't done so yet. So, you know, because they 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 they're putting all these impressive films. That's what's great about the Criterion Collection. They they really try to find not just films that you know are classics and everybody loves and you know are well known like Doctor Strange Love or The Third Man or Ron or Seven Samurai, but but lesser known films too, you know that that might be forgotten, you know. I don't know, Lady Snowblood. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of films that are kind of off the beaten path that maybe you never hear of unless you, you know, heard them through Criterion. Summer with Monica, maybe by Bergman. Um, La Note by Antonioni. Um, I don't. I'm, I'm not. I. I wish I could just. The Bitter Tears of Petra Van Kant by uh, Petra Van Kant by uh, Fassbender. World on the Wire by Fassbender. Um, just films like that. Um, so I, I'm I'm going off on a tangent there, but episode of the Scottish TV series Cast and Crew from 2003. Featuring interviews of McDowell, Andrefik, Rakov, director's assistant Stephen Frears. Oh, Stephen Frears, who did My Beautiful Laundrette. I haven't watched that, and I had it on tape, but I think I got rid of it because it was on a blank tape, and I don't think I could watch it very well because it was on public television. So, and at that time, where where I lived, I was in a house, and it was a it was antenna. I didn't have cable. So I don't think it came in well, but but I remember Stephen Freer's directing Dangerous Liaisons, which I have a copy on video cassette, and uh, I think he direct, directed another film I might have seen. Did he direct The Grifters? I'm not sure. Stephen Freer's, and I think I saw that movie with was that John Cusack and Angelica Houston? I don't know. Anyways, um, so I'm. I'm uh, Producer Michael Medwin and screenwriter David Sherwin. Video interview with actor Graham Crowden. Crowden, rather. Thursday's Children, 1954, an, American, an Academy Award-winning documentary about a school for deaf children directed by Lindsay Anderson and Guy Brenton and narrated by actor Richard Burden. And a booklet featuring essay by critic David Ehrenstein, as well as reprinted pieces by Sherwin and Anderson. So,
anyways, uh, show you the inside of this. This looks pretty, pretty cool. And then you got the disc here. And this I haven't seen, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Should be another great Knock McDowell performance, you know, because he's a really good actor. And I think he, he well, no, he, he asked Lindsay Anderson if he should work with Kubrick. And uh, Lindsay Anderson told him to go for it. Um, Kubrick, when he cast Clark Gorge, he said, this is the only guy who could play Alex, you know. Because originally Clark Gorge was going to feature, uh, well, at one point, there was there was talk that the Rolling Stones would be involved with Clockwork Orange. I guess Mick Jagger would play Alex, but um, maybe that that could be interesting, but really not as interesting and not as well done as it, if it, it, um, as it turned out with Kubrick. You know, I, I think it just perfectly matched up. You know. Um, with Kubrick, but of course he's he's regard he's my favorite director, and it's um, and this has it says in the back, one man can change the world with a bullet in the right place. So, anyways, that's if this next one I bought, I don't know, it just seemed kind of interesting. It an interesting cover, so that's why I bought it, I guess. Fantastic Planet. French movie, I believe. Uh, yes, French. Nothing else has ever looked or felt like director René Lelou's animated Marvel Fantastic Planet, a politically minded and visually inventive work of science fiction. The film is set on a distant planet called Yagam, where enslaved humans, Oms, are the playthings of giant blue native inhabitants, Dregs. After Tear, kept as a pet uh, since infancy, he escapes from his gigantic child captor. He is swept up by a band of radical fellow uh, fellow arms who are resisting the drag's oppression and violence. With this eerie, cool, coolly surreal cutout animation by Roland Tapar, brilliant psychedelic jazz score by Alan Gorgor, and wondrous creatures and landscapes, this can award winned can awarded. 1973 counterculture classic is a perennial compelling statement against conformity and violence. Uh, alternate English language soundtrack, uh, Lay Tempo Morta 1965 and Lay Escargolo 1966, two early short films by director Rene Lalou and illustrator Roland Topper. The two looks so 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 a 2009 documentary on La Lou episode of the French television program Italiques from 1974 about Topor's work interview with Topor from 1973 trailer and an essay by critic Michael Brooks so uh, just text on the back there and uh, so let's see what the, cut the inside has. I, I'm totally, I don't know anything about this movie, so um, we'll see at some point what it's like. But I guess this is like uh, that other animated piece I have of Criterion's Watership Down, you know, to, um, I don't know, maybe they're companion pieces, I'm not sure, but... So that's, and there's just, there's just text back here, so. That's Fantastic Planet. This next movie um, is, I my friend watched it, it's, there's no dialogue. It's a, I guess it's sort of a silent movie, but, or maybe there's sound, but there's no dialogue. 
Naked Island, Japanese movie by Kaneda Shinoda, Shindo, Shindo rather. Director Kaneda Shindo's documentary like Dialogue Free Portrayal of Daily Struggle is a work of stunning visual beauty and invention. The international breakthrough for one of Japan's most innovative filmmakers, who went on to make other unique masterworks such as Onibaba and Kuroneko, which I've seen those two. The Naked Island follows a family whose home is on a tiny remote island in the Japanese archipelago. They must row a great distance to another shore, collect water from a well in buckets, and row back to their island, a nearly backbreaking task essential for the survival of these people and their land. Featuring a ph phenomenal modernist score by Hikaru Hayashi, this is a truly hypnotic experience with a rhythm unlike that of any other film. And it's got a video introduction by director Kaneto Shindo, directed, recorded for 2011 retrospective of his work, audio commentary, recorded it in 2000 featuring Shindo and composer Hikaru Hayashi, and a new appreciation of the film by actor Benicio Del Toro, new interview with film scholar Akira Mizuto, Mizuta Lippet, trailer, and an essay by film scholar Hayden Guest. So, So, there's no, there's no, there's no picture in in this inside this. Maybe that's supposed to be representative of what this movie is like. Um, that you know, being a kind of blank and all that. There's not much. There's not much uh, artwork in this, I guess. But I think it's done that way on purpose because it's called a naked island, I guess. So maybe that's. Maybe it's on purpose that way. Next up, Innocence. It's a horror, horror movie with uh, Deborah Kerr. I hear it's really good. This generally frightening, exquisitely made supernatural gothic stars Deborah Carr as an emotionally fragile governess who comes to suspect that there's something very, very wrong with her precocious, precocious new charges. Psychosexually intensified ad adaptation of Henry James' classic, The Turn of the Screw, Screw, co-written by Truman Capote and directed by Jack Clayton, the innocence is the triumph of narrative economy and technical expressiveness. From its chilling sound design to the Stygian depths of its widescreen cinematography by Freddie Francis. F Freddie Francis, I did, I think, uh, was the cinematographer for um, Lawrence of Arabia. So you got a, you got a lot of good people working on this. You got Truman Capote, who's Supposed to be, he's supposed to be a really good writer. So, and Henry James, you know, I really haven't really really, really read Henry James, but you know, I, I I think he's supposed to be a pretty good writer. Um, introduction by cultural historian Christopher Frayling, who's on a fair amount of like Criterion stuff, and also he's featured on um, other th other things I have like my. Uh, um, Two of my Leone films, or maybe three of them. Audio commentary featuring Frey, Frey, oh, I said that. New interview with cinematographer John Bailey about director photography, Freddie Francis and the look of the film. New piece on the making of the film featuring interviews from 2006 with Francis, editor Jim Clark, and script supervisor Pamela Mann Francis. Trailer and an essay by critic Maitland McDonough. So. And this looks like it's kind of uh, sparing and visual. There's no, I don't think there's a picture behind here. But I'll look just to be sure. No. It's just black. There's not, no pictures or anything to this. And uh, oh, this is another pamphlet. I do have another Deborah, Deborah Carr movie, uh, um, King and I, I'll show that at a certain point. Uh, I, I inherited that from my mother. Um, and uh, I haven't watched The King and I, but maybe at some point I will. So that's The Innocence, which I hear is a really good movie. This one I watched part of. Um, my favorite Japanese film is based on this play. But I also have, maybe I have three different versions of this. 
Um, well, I have this version, and I have the Throne of Blood, which is one of the versions of it. But anyways, it's Macbeth by Roman Polanski. Um, which reminds me, uh, Orson Welles is... Um, he, he did Chimes at Midnight. That was that was that's in the Criterion Collection, and um, they are going to to uh, release Othello by on Criterion um, in the coming next few months. They're going to release Othello, so I, I I'm, I'm I might keep my eye on that when the sale comes. Um, oh, okay. So I read the back. Roman, Roman Polanski imbues this unflinchingly violent adaptation of William Shakespeare's tragedy of ruthless ambition and murder in medieval Scotland with grit and dramatic intensity. John Finch and Francesca Annis give the performances ch charged with fury and sex appeals to decorated warrior, warriors rising through their ranks and his driven wife, scheming together to take the throne by any means. Co, co -added, ad Code ad adapted by Polanski and the great theater critic and dramaturg Kenneth Tynan and shot against a series of stunning, stark British Isle landscapes. This version of Macbeth is among the most atmospheric and authentic of all Shakespeare films. So I, now I remember the other Macbeth I'm thinking of, but I don't have it. It's um, I, bar I borrowed a Bella Tarr movie from a friend of mine. And uh, what was it, Bella Tarr? Oh, Satan and Tango. And one of the special features was this basically, mostly it was just one camera, but there was one, during the introduction of, of, of Macbeth being shot on these video cameras, a small portion of the, of, the, of the play was shot with one camera, and then maybe 10 minutes later it changes to another, and it stays with that camera for the rest of the, the play. Um, and uh, there's other, oh, and I mentioned about Orson Welles that before he made Citizen Kane, he, um, he of course, did the um, Bore the World's Broadcast. They got him in some hot water because um, um, he, he knew that, I think he really knew that he started his, his broadcast while another broadcast was already on, and when the radio listeners turned their dial to his broadcast, they thought actual Martians were attacking the United States. And uh, before that, he did an all-black production of Macbeth in Harlem. So so that's where my um, thinking about Macbeth was coming from, you know, like as, as to uh, um, um, you know, um, where I'd seen all these Macbeths. Um, <clears throat> and then it has these uh, restoration approved by director Roman Polanski. Uh, t t toil and Trouble, making a Macbeth a new documentary featuring interviews of Polanski, producer Andrew Bronsberg, assistant executive producer Victor Loans, and actors Francesca Annis and Martin Shaw. Polanski Meets Macbeth, a 1971 documentary by Frank Simon, featuring rare footage of the film's cast and crew at work. Interview with co-screenwriter Kenneth Tynan from a 1971 episode of The Dick Cavett Show. Two Macbeths, a segment from a 1972 episode of the British television series Aquarius, featuring Polanski and theater director Peter Coe. Trailers and an essay by critic Terence Rafferty. So. And... Uh, yeah, another pamphlet. So, but this one looks pretty interesting visually. I only watched the starting of it, but, you know, I, I would like to, I, I don't know where you find time to do every, all these things you want to do in your life, but I'd love to read all the plays of Shakespeare because he's supposed to be, have great insight into the psychology of people. Um, but, you know, there's other things you want to do, too. There's like, um, well, like I've read a lot of the novels of Dostoevsky. I've read Nietzsche. You know, I've, I've, I've read some things. I want to read Plato's Republic. But I, I have other things I want to do, too. I want to watch all these movies I've never seen before. I mean, 
I've seen movie, some movies, but I haven't seen all, all the movies I want to see. It's probably impossible to see every single movie you want to see in your life or, or see a bunch of, a set, a set number of movies during your life because it's just basically impossible to do that. Um, um, yeah, so, um, anyways, let me see. Uh, what am I going to do here? Um, I've got five more criterions to show, and that'll be, that's the end of the criterions. I'm trying. I'm deliberating whether or not I should do two videos, and um, I think that's what I'm going to do because because I can announce on the the second video that this will be the last video. So th not this video, but the next video of Criterion's, not the last video of the co collection, but of Criterion. So, anyways, I'll finish it off this uh, this video with uh, Silent La Silence de la Mer, the Silence of the Sea. I think. Uh, Mayor, I think, is C in, in French. It's by Jean Pierre Melville and says, Beginning film. Jean Pierre Melville began his superb feature filmmaking career with this powerful adaptation of an influential underground novel written during the Nazi occupation of France. A cultured, naively idealistic, idealistic, idealistic German officer is billeted in the home of a middle aged man and his grown niece. Their response to his presence, their only form of resistance, is complete silence. Constructed with elegant minimalism and shot by the legendary Henry de Kay, with hushed eloquence, Le Salant de la Mer points the view, points away rather, towards Melville's later films about resistance and the occupation. Leon Morin Priest, Army of Shadows, yet remains a singularly eerie masterwork in its own right. So... It's got the short 24 hours in the life of a clown, 1946, director Jean Pierre Melville's first film. New interview with film scholar Jeanette Vin Vincent Doe, codenamed Melville, 2008, a 76 di minute documentary on Melville's time in the French Resistance. In his films about it, Melville Steps Out of the Shadows, 2010, a 42 minute documentary about La Salons de la Mer. Interview with Melville from 1959. And a booklet featuring an essay by critic Jeffrey O'Brien and, and a selection from Rue Nogori's 1971 book, Melville on Melville. So, and I, I love John Pierre Melville. Um, I've, I, well, maybe I've only watched, well, I watched The Samurai. That was the first film I bought of his. And uh, Army of Shadows. I like that a lot. Um... I don't know if I've watched any other films of his. I, I think I have, but I, I just can't recall what they are. Um, oh yeah, I watched uh, La Deleuze, or I think that's the name of it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's um, what that means in French is something like the hat, and it's sort of like in our language the snitch, uh, because because his 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 um, characters are modeled after. Uh, the mom, you know, they're modeled after um, um, after the, the the stories are are modeled on um, like um, cr crimes, gangsters, gangsters. That's what I was looking for. That's the word I was looking for. Oh, and I also saw a Bob Lef Lefman Bloor of, of um, Melville's. So. I have seen some of his movies. Uh, I haven't seen Le Cirque, Le Cirque de Rouge. Le, Le Cirque Rouge. I, I have that. I haven't watched that. Leon Moore and Priest. I haven't watched that. And then there's another one with like a long title. Um, I can't remember the title. But I, that's another one I haven't watched. I showed all my Melvilles. I showed them quite a while back. many A few years back. If you want to see my video on my Melvilles. Just go to the very bottom of my videos, and you'll find them there. You'll also find th things like Hitchcock. You'll find uh, Kurosawa, Bunuel, um, my Brisson movies. Um, I did buy a Brisson recent, well, not recently, like a few years ago, and uh, I don't, 
I don't know if I ever showed it on YouTube, but so uh, this particular movie is the only uh, Criterion that it, of Melville's that I own on Blu-ray. All the rest of them are DVDs. So. You know, I could go on and make this video longer, but I think I'm going to shorten it because I, I wanted to, um, I, I just wanted to address, um, you know, if some people find the, me not, me, me describing, you know, me reading off the back and telling all the special features and then providing my own commentary and insight and thoughts about why I'm into the movies or what I think. I, I just read the back because um, something I, I might discover something that I, I didn't find out um, from just buying it. Because when I bought the, when I buy them like off of Barnes and Noble's website or, you know, from Amazon or Criterion's website or, or at a store, sometimes I don't really look at it and, and read all the information. I just buy it. So, and sometimes I look at the back, I suppose, but maybe I just glance at the backs. But uh, most of the time, Criterion has pleased me with their selections. They're a really good company. So um, I think the last, vi the, well, not the last, the next video will be the last one on the Criterions. And then we can continue from there and uh, tackle uh, the last, well, there's a significant amount, well, some, somewhat significant amount of movies from the bookcases. We've got some movies from the towers. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a video solely d dedicated to uh, Seinfeld because I have the box at the complete series. And uh, I also forgot to say that I have uh, music. Uh, basically, they're concerts. Um, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll show those in, in a separate video. So those that the, the, the video concerning uh, musicians and bands and concerts will be concentrated into one video. So anyways, take out, take a look for that and uh, I'll see you soon. I'll be right back. Uh, I'll be um, back with another video um, featuring fi finishing off the criterions. Okay. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.